All right, guys. It is a windy but pleasant winter day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization where we have survived the big blow in Citrus County, Florida. My new trailer that I bought last week, good Lord, guys. Uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, it will be a gamble living here uh, in Florida in hurricane hurricane land. But anyway, I still have a trailer, amazingly, I'm thrilled to say, and it is now Friday morning, February 7th, 2020, and uh, before I dive into my weekly Manga Bay Roundup, I have several big thank yous to send out to kind-hearted tribes members who have sent me some donations to uh, support whatever this is I do on YouTube. Uh, I want to send out once again... I would say Frederick has officially entered uh, angel territory. Thank you very much, Frederick, for your latest very kind donation to support my work here. And a big thank you to Rosalind Embaro and to Craig Lacasse and anybody who has ever who has ever supported my and the little dog's work here on YouTube. We really do appreciate it. And so with that pleasant task out of the way, just in case you don't realize this, I'm sorry to announce you have stumbled into Collapse Chronicles. <clears throat> I am Sam Mitchell. This is my little co-pilot, Sancho Panza. It is Friday, so what we do every Friday here on Collapse Chronicles as we head over to mongabay.com to uh, check in with my buddy Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over there to see what's going on on a collapsing planet this week. And Manga Bay is a little shy this week, so we're also going to uh, <clears throat> look into the Washington Post environmental roundup of the week. And I've said, I've been saying for a couple of years now, with no trace of irony, that the Washington Post it has suddenly become a, a, a print for a mainstream media outlet. Uh, I am actually considering the various owners of the Washington Post. I'm quite shocked by the uh, Washington Post as much abuse as I get for making that statement. I'm going to give credit or credits too. Why don't we just go over to the Washington Post and then we'll <coughs> get over to Manga Bay. So what is on the minds of those collapsitarians at WAPO? Okay, well if I can figure out how to call them up. <coughs> Bumblebees are vanishing and scientists blame climate change, which is another way of saying bumblebees are vanishing and scientists blame humans is a more correct. New research ties a nearly 50 percent decline in North America bumblebees to worsening climate extremes, especially extreme heat. I thought bumblebees should do fine in extreme heat. And I don't know if that has to do with the fact that the plants they're pollinating are curling up and dying. As long as we're talking about threats to bumblebees and the rest of the planet, what is going on with Donald Trump? <clears throat> Trump kept this controversial pesticide on the market. Now, its biggest manufacturer is stopping production. We have some uh, <coughs> some good news here in the collapse. This chlor chlorpyrifos, however you pronounce that, that has been getting all of this heat. Uh, I, it's, it's manufacturer probably knowing the lawsuits is getting ready to get is uh, stopping production of this toxic stuff. Of course, Donald Trump and the EPA, they don't see any problem in a pesticide that it's the own manufacturer. Anyway, as long as we're talking about our 
friend Donald Trump. These southern Utah sites were once off limits to development. Now, Donald Trump will auction off the rights to drill and graze there. The Trump administration is greenlighting drilling and logging at Bears Ears and Grand Staircase Escalante. You know, first thing he did, one of the very first things he did upon getting into office, you know, is slicing those uh, national monuments in half. Okay. Uh... I, <clears throat> I've already covered this earlier this week. This is WAPO's coverage, a very poorly worded headline. That they, I will offer my services. I do have a degree in journalism. Maybe the WAPO... What does this mean to you guys? The world's oceans are speeding up. The world's oceans are speeding up. Another mega-scale consequence of climate change. New research finds an acceleration across 76% of the global ocean. And what this is talking about, I think, is that story I've already covered about uh, these ocean circulations. Uh, it, guys, everything is speeding up. Uh, we are going uh, spiraling into this collapse. It doesn't matter. Jet stream. Well, jet streams aren't speeding up. I guess jet streams are stalling. <clears throat> Either they're speeding up or they're dying. It's one of the two. You're going faster than ever or slower than ever. Everything is out of whack. Anyway, uh, what's next? Climate change is shrinking winter snow in the south and in fall and spring over much of the nation, report shows. In many areas, snow hopes, snow hopes are beginning to melt away while in other areas it is increasing. As I was just saying, there is... This whole concept of the new normal, it's the new abnormal. From this point forward, guys, nobody knows what's going on. Okay? Uh, the, the normal snowfall here is going one way. The normal snowfall here is going another way. Oh, man. Okay. The question, are Republicans coming out of the closet on climate change? Some GOP lawmakers actually believe that they must keep up with a changing electorate. I have uh, had other stories about this where these young Republicans, these millennial Republicans, are not buying this crap, you know, from the, uh, you know, it's kind of like the okay boomer of climate change that uh, at least the, the millennial Republicans are blowing the whistle on this BS uh, from Donald Trump and uh, all the rest of them. Okay, I think that Paul Beckwith has been talking a lot about this this week over on his cha channel about what is going on in Europe uh, this week. Uh, the warmth is really unheard of. Europe just posted its warmest January ever on record. Helsinki, Oslo, Copenhagen, and Stockholm went above freezing every single day in January for the first time ever. This is January. In, uh, in, uh, where is Helsinki? Is that Finland? I, I, I lose track, guys, of my geography. 
but Scandinavia, it's the big, it's the big four in Scandinavia. Every one of the cities in Scandinavia, not one city went 24 hours below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius for the first time in recorded history. Uh, here's a story about <clears throat> spotted seals uh, off northern Japan dealing with their melting sea ice. Uh, I've mentioned this one already uh, about Donald Trump taking aim at uh, migratory birds. Uh, that this migratory bird treaty for 100 years has been sitting there and now Donald Trump has decided he forgot migratory birds to add to his hit list of our fellow earthlings. Trump's proposed new rules would ensure that people and, more importantly, corporations will not face prosecution for accidentally killing birds. Accidentally killing birds. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we have new unprecedented data confirms that Antarctica's most dangerous glacier is melting from below. This is the uh, the Thwaites Glacier, sometimes called the Doomsday Glacier. You know, people have been suspecting for years that this why this glacier is me melting, and they've been suspecting that it's melting quicker from below than from above. And they finally, I, you know, NPR. I uh, was doing a big story on this that we now, the votes are in that it is, in fact, uh, melting from below, showing an alarming warming trend. An alarming warming trend in the Doomsday Glacier. Anyway, that's what's going on uh, at the bottom of the planet where it is midsummer. So the Doomsday Glacier is on full melt from below while uh, every one uh, of the major cities in Scandinavia went above freezing every single day in January for the first time in history. But at least some of those young Republicans are coming out of the closet We'll see if we can get Book Hermit eventually to come out of his closet as well. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, what is going on in, uh, in uh, Indonesia? Well, we have some good news that this Manga Bay reporter who got thrown into prison, when was it? In mid-December, you know, this American guy uh, got thrown into prison for two months, 45 days, uh, 45 days, but finally they let him go. I guess, uh, I guess not such good news for Indonesian investigative reporter uh, Tommy Apriando, who has now shown up dead. In, uh, so they let the Manga Bay guy off, but the, uh, how did this guy, Tommy Apriando, an esteemed investigative journalist and the chairperson of an one of these Indonesian alliance of independent journalists died Sunday at the age of 30. The cause of death is complications from diabetes. Okay, uh, let's see, is anyone... 
Well, okay, uh, I guess this is, he was born in 1989, 31 years old, dead of diabetes. Okay, then no one's claiming a, uh, a conspiracy in this one. Uh, we're going to assume this really was natural causes. Uh, Apriondo was not afraid to speak truth to power. He took on Indonesian politicians who used their connections with oligarchs to enrich themselves. He exposed abuses by mining and palm oil companies <clears throat> and told the complex stories that underpin land conflicts. Anyway, uh, I guess the Indonesian government did not need to throw him in prison or kill him. They just let diabetes take its course. Uh, let's see. Uh, a lot of stories in, uh, in Manga Bay this week. See, Manga Bay, I, I don't want you to get the impression that all of their stories are, are news about the collapse of a planet. They do a lot of, quote, you know, nature stories, just interesting uh, nature and biology stories that I don't cover in these. I mean, they're, they're interesting stories, and you need to go on mangabay.com and get this newsletter yourself, but it's just not relevant to uh, this channel, so I skip over a lot of those. Okay, hmm. What is going on in the sub-Saharan country of Ghana? Imagine this. Ghana's government facing pushback in bid to mine biodiversity haven for bauxite. Hmm, imagine this. Ghana's Atoa Forest Reserve is home to dozens of endangered species as well as being home to a substantial bauxite deposit. You know, bauxite is what they use to make aluminum. Environmental impact assessments have not been completed, and conservationists and local communities reject the new plan to mine bauxite in the reserve as a threat. Hmm... The government claims it can mine the forest with minimal damage, yielding 150 million metric tons of bauxite. Oh yeah, I know you can go in there and rip out 150 million tons of bauxite out of a federally protected forest reserve and it will, you know, just spread some annual ryegrass seed over the top of it. I need to do a rant sometime, guys, about this, this crap on NPR uh, uh, that I heard recently talking about, you know, this mountaintop removal in the southern Appalachians where they went in there and just dynamited the tops off of all of these mountains and now they've gone and planted some grass over there. You should have heard NPR falling all over themselves, singing the praises of these giant mining companies, how well they've cleaned up uh, the mountaintop removal. Who, who can tell that uh, there was ever a mountaintop here, never mentioning all of the streams at the bottom of the hill completely buried under all of it. But anyway, that's another rant for another day. They have several interviews this week. Uh, I noticed that Manga Bay is doing more and more interviews with folks. Uh, Sarah, we need to mine Manga Bay for uh, for interview ideas. So, uh, all right, here is one. 
This is a fellow, a commentary by a fellow named David Wilkove. You will not believe this. The wildlife trade threatens animals and people alike. This is Princeton University professor of ecology, evolutionary biology, and public affairs. Uh, using the coronavirus outbreak as a just one sign is one of the risks of uh, the wildlife trade. What do the coronavirus, HIV, and the impending extinction of the world's rhinos have in common? The answer is that they are all the result of the wildlife trade a rapidly growing multi-billion dollar enterprise that is driving species to extinction, <clears throat> damaging ecosystems, and increasingly threatening human health. And then of course, Rhett always puts on these, the views expressed here are those of the author, not necessarily Manga Bay. All right, here is a slower than previously expected story. What, what, what was I just talking about? What, what was I just saying a minute ago? After what, about three years of faster than previously expected, we finally have a slower than previously expected story. I, had, I did a double take. Did I read that right? Okay, unbelievable. Carbon uptake slower than expected in Amazon secondary forest. Okay. A secondary forest in a portion of the Brazilian Amazon takes up carbon at only about twice the rate of a primary forest as compared to carbon accumulation at up to 11 times in other parts of the world, if you're trying to figure out what that gobbledygook means, what it means is bad news if similar findings are confirmed elsewhere in the, tro in the Amazon and the tropics. Uh, let's see. Uh, what it means, what it's saying is uh, I'm, I'm trying to uh, distill this uh, this as, as quick as I can. What it's saying is, the, the bottom line, and you can go on here and read this uh, study yourself, you, you know, all of this BS claiming, uh, with these people claiming if they cut down the primary rainforest and just plant other trees there, that it's going to do as much as the uh, as the primary forest, and and obviously it's BS. Uh, that what they're doing is they're blowing the the BS whistle on anyone making that claim. Uh, that there's no way to compare a secondary human planted forest to a natural rainforest. All right, well, it looks like Greta Thunberg has some competition. You know, Greta, St. Greta, again, being uh, nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I have to admit, guys, I called that one wrong. So who is, who is Greta Thunberg going up against? All right, Chief Rayoni. All right, I, uh, I like this guy. Uh, Chief Rayone, you might, you know, he is, uh, he's one of these Amazon uh, Indians uh, who, who really gives hell to, uh, he's like the Greta Thunberg of the Amazon rainforest. So anyway, uh, <laughs> let's all wish Chief Rayone luck in whipping Greta Thunberg. My guess is neither one of them are going to get it. But anyway, okay.
We have two stories out of Ecuador. Let's start out with, uh, I don't know why they made these two separate stories. Uh, come on. Well, I know that I, okay. For Ecuador's eco agenda, 2019 was a year of setbacks. Yes, unrest over environmental issues. Uh, do you think so? Uh, but let's move up to 2020, which is more important. That was 2019, and then uh, 10 stories later, you find uh, Ecuador in 2020. Uh, why did they separate these two stories? I do not understand. What the hell? Okay, anyway. That's 2019, so let's look ahead to Ecuador in 2020. For Ecuador, a litany of environmental challenges awaits in 2020. For its size, Ecuador now has the highest annual deforestation rate of any country in the Western Hemisphere. I guess there's no forest left in Haiti. Uh, Ecuador, now the number one most assaulted store uh, country in the Western Hemisphere. You know Ecuador, where they have put the rights of nature in the, con in the Constitution. Uh, in addition to oil exploitation, you know, which is one of the major reasons for the deforestation, in, a, in addition, well, to, to the deforestation itself and oil exploitation, Ecuador is also facing the expansion of large-scale mining operations in high biodiversity areas with large numbers of endemic species and in indigenous territories. 